Friends, how's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Come in, take a seat. Just playing. I know you're sitting on the toilet right now. Hope it's a good one. Now, you guys know that I have no problem with wearing super popular fragrances. You want to wear Dior Sauvage? That makes you happy? Wear it. You want to wear Bleu de Chanel, Aqua de Joe, whatever? Wear it. Wear what makes you happy. Wear what you like. And I do also. I wear popular fragrances like big designer releases all the time. But maybe... You want to wear a designer fragrance, you know, that has that mass appeal that isn't one of the huge fragrance lines from one of those big designer houses. Maybe you don't want to wear the newest Paco Rabanne. Maybe you don't want to wear the newest Dior. Well, that's what we're talking about here today. Some fragrances that are designers, they have that mass appeal built into them. They have that compliment factor, that ease of use, but they are not your big major releases that you're gonna see advertised all over the place. These ones fly right under the radar. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about these killer scents. I will have each one of these linked in the description below in case you want to check them out. And also, if you shop at maxaroma.com or twistedlily.com, you know the drill. Use the code GENTS10 for 10% off your order. And those are linked in the description below. Hey, keep this between us, all right? But uh, you want to know a, a fragrance that's got that mass appeal? <gasps> what? My fragrance? Terra Nova. That's actually not one of the ones I'm featuring. It's just on the desk, so I figured why not. Now, the first fragrance that I want to talk to you guys about is this one, Kenzo Aqua Porome. Yeah, this guy right here. I've talked about it a few times on the channel and I actually really like this one. When it came out, it did get dumped on a little bit. People were hating on it. And part of that I feel like is because, well, first off, it's Kenzo. It doesn't have a massive following as far as their fragrance releases go nowadays. And then secondarily, it's Kenzo Aqua. So you go into it thinking aquatic, water, right? Yeah, I mean, basically if you have two friggin brain cells to just rub together that's what you would think of when you see this kenzo aqua in the blue bottle that looks like a wave yeah i'm, I'm pretty certain that that's going to be a summertime fragrance that is heavy on the marine notes and that is not really what it is so of course that is going to cause some issues i mean it would be like naming your fragrance kenzo leather and then you get it in and it smells like aqua de joe people would be like is it, do i have is this fake so yeah it's not really an aquatic fragrance so once we get past that hurdle we can move on and realize that it's actually a really really nice scent that has similarities to one million lucky at a much lower price point. Now, of course, it's not exactly the same as One Million Lucky, but the hazelnut in here with that little bit of a freshness that it does have, uh, because it, it does have a marine note, it's just not overdone, but because it does have this freshness mixing with hazelnut and then tonka in the base, it has a similar scent profile, even though the notes aren't the same, as one Million Lucky, like I talked about. So it ends up being a multi-season fragrance, good in spring, you can wear it in summer, and good during the fall also, good for daytime or nighttime, and it's a compliment puller that you can get for under 30 bucks. So yes, I understand that there was maybe some disappointment when it came out with people that bought it, but overall, when you look at what you're getting for the price point here, Kenzo Aqua is great in my opinion. Let's keep it moving, and from there we'll talk about Drakkar Intense. Haha, <laughs> from Guy LaRoche. Guy, you're the man. So uh, everybody knows I've got a soft spot for Drakkar Noir. Uh, maybe more than a, a soft spot, maybe kind of a weird obsession. No, that's not weird. Am I strange? No, it's everyone else that's strange. So yeah, Drakkar Intense, it has a little similarity-ish to uh, Drakkar Noir. But this one is much more modern smelling, which makes sense because it's newer, obviously. Much, much, much newer. But this one smells awesome in the mid. I love it. It's got this great warmth, kind of a sweet spiciness undertone to it. Really, really cheap. So there's a lot to love about it. It's an eau de parfum concentration. For me, uh, the performance could be a little bit better, but other people out there I seem to get great performance from it. And just on the nose, you know, uh, the price that you pay and how it smells, I love this stuff. The only drawback for me really was the performance and with how cheap it is now, you can spray it on like crazy. After that, let's talk about this guy, Dirty English from Juicy Couture. Yeah, Juicy Couture. Don't really think of that as a, a house making men's fragrances, do you? But they did with this one. This is a vintage bottle. If you get it nowadays, it won't come with these little 
pewter charms in the front. It just has a plastic cap now. Uh, but to be fair, the new Dirty English, if you want to call it that, the reformulated Dirty English is really close to this one. And honestly, it's not really worth seeking one of these out. Like if you have to pay a big premium to get one of these over a uh, current bottle, it's not worth it. If they're the same price, get the vintage. I actually did a video uh, quite a while back, maybe a couple years, I feel like. I don't know, time runs together. Uh, comparing this to the new uh, iteration not a huge difference. So this one has a really heavy note breakdown when you look at it, lots of woods, leather, oud, little touch of citrus in there. But when you look at the note breakdown, it looks like the type of fragrance that's gonna absolutely blow you away with way too much performance and stank. Yes, stank. But in actuality, it really doesn't. I mean, it lasts on your skin for a decent amount of time, but it's not uh, a strong, projector and it's actually really well done all things considered for the price point it's a little bit similar to gucci pour Homme one which is discontinued and commands a heavy premium nowadays so that one's worth picking up for a long while there actually dirty english was one of those go-to cheapies for people and over time it kind of like fell out of fashion but it's still really good fell out of fashion in terms of being recommended then we got this guy mugler cologne fly away which is basically what mugler said to all their men's fragrances fly away we don't want you anymore we don't care about men's fragrances don't come at me with the alien man stuff we've talked about this alien man is not up to snuff when you compare it to pure malt pure havan etc etc mugler what are you doing so yeah mugler for men nowadays mm, not held in high regard uh, actually just not held in any regard i don't think anybody's really looking out for them anymore but fly away is a great fragrance in their cologne line. This one really fixates on a rindy citrus. So if you don't like that type of citrus, you probably won't like this. I'm talking things like Light Blue Forever, a Terre d'Hermes Au Givre, stuff like that. If you don't like citrus notes along those lines, you probably won't like this. But if you do, you have got to seek this stuff out. It is really good during summer. Love this one, so does my wife. And my favorite, from the new Mugler Cologne fragrances. I say new like they just came out. They've been out for a minute, but from that line. And we got this guy, Yop Ohm Absolute. Now this is another one kind of similar to Dirty English in that you look at the bottle, black with this yellow script, and it looks like, mm, that's a fragrance that's gonna have a punch to it. That right there is gonna be a beast mode fragrance. I ain't even gotta smell the thing. I can tell you right now, kinda comes off like that, you know? No breakdown, pretty simple. It's got black pepper, incense, alang alang, tonka, you know, not a, not a whole heck of a lot. It's very simplistic, no breakdown, but still yet, it's named Absolute. The bottle is black, it has incense, it has vetiver also, so you're expecting a dark punch. It lasts on my skin for a good amount of time, but it does not project all that heavily. So it's gonna be kind of the drawback with this one, but as far as the scent itself, it smells real nice. Great fall, winter time fragrance, early spring even, if it's a little bit chilly, a little bit cool, this will work great. Some people have found uh, vague similarities to Eau de Beau from L'Occitane with that one. I don't know uh, how close I feel like those two are, but uh, you could say similar family, similar style. Like if you like one, you should like the other. Great smelling, just that performance could be amped up a bit. Let's go with another black bottle, Lalique White in Black. Now this one, a little bit of a hype beast to an extent in the fragrance community. So as far as people that are like really into fragrances, they're gonna know about this. But your average person, they aren't. You know, your shopper who's going into Macy's, uh, Sephora, Ulta, any store like that, uh, they're not really going to be keyed in on white and black. Uh, sweet, spicy fragrance. It's been compared to Parfums de Marley's Layton. So it's that style, that type of scent, and it is absolutely a compliment puller. Another one great for fall and winter time, one of those compliment puller types of scents with a nice classiness as well, which you expect from Lalique. That one though does have a propensity, probably more so than anything else in this list, to sell out at discounters. And that's because that's gonna be the best place to get it in the US because you don't have to pay a 
crazy jacked up price, of course. And uh, where that one is keyed in on by the fragrance community, they do scoop it up and it does end up selling out. So uh, be aware of that. I mean, it is in stock quite often, but you do sometimes have an issue finding that at discounters. After that, let's talk about this guy, Limpica Ohm. This is from Lolita Limpica. And unfortunately right now, only a couple fragrances from this house for men that you can pick up. All the others are pretty much discontinued, more difficult to find. So it's this one, Limpica Ohm, and then Green Lover, which is not super duper green, actually kind of a, an orangey fragrance with like a, a fizziness to it. Super, super pleasant though, really like that one. But Limpica Ohm decided to talk about this one. It's uh, a re-release of sorts, a re-bottling. So the original version of this was in a different bottle style and it was called Lolita Limpica Ohm Masculine, which I have a bottle of over there. Uh, but that one obviously a little bit more difficult to find nowadays, this one, pretty easy. You can find this at just about any discounter. And I think to an extent also, this is going to be like Dirty English, where if you can find the original for the same price, sure, go for that. But the difference between this and the original, not big enough to go seek out that original and pay a jacked up price. So this is one of the few men's fragrances that has licorice as one of the main notes, like really the focal point that most everything else builds off of is licorice in this one. Licorice and anise, uh, more specifically. There's also rum in here, there's vanilla, there's almond, and a bit of a woodiness as well. It's another scent that I think stands out quite well against everything else being released right now, but it still does have that mass appeal to it, that versatility. But again, keep in mind the licorice-ness, licorice-ness of the fragrance. Cause I know some people just do not dig that. They don't like that scent profile. Then we got this guy right here. This is a, a great kind of under the radar blue fragrance, Narciso Rodriguez for him, Blue Noir Eau de Toilette Extreme. Yes, it's a long name, Narciso Rodriguez for him, Blue Noir Eau de Toilette Extreme. And you do have to make sure uh, that you get this one, like the Eau de Toilette, that's a completely different thing. The Eau de Parfum is a completely different thing. The Parfum is a completely different thing. If you want the one that has blue fragrance sensibilities, that's this one. Well, you could maybe make an argument that a couple of the other Blue Noirs have that kind of versatility, but let's not go any further than we've already gone down that rabbit hole. This one's a very refreshing fragrance. It's got citrus, good amount of it, kind of an iciness to it. So it's got that briskness, that kind of enlivening nature when you spray it on. It's got musk and woods. It's not hyper complex, especially compared to a couple of the others in the Blue Noir line, but it is classy. It's versatile, a great type of scent that you can grab, spray, and go in just about any situation. Then we got this guy right here, Brioni Eau de Parfum. I would also tell you guys that Brioni Eau de Parfum Intense is very good as well. It doesn't smell like this one at all, which is a little bit funny because this is Eau de Parfum and then the other one's name is just Eau de Parfum Intense. So you would think it's an intense version of this, but it's not two completely separate smelling fragrances. That one though, very good also, harder to find though. So this one is a classy, semi-sweet violet fragrance. It's got ozonic notes to it. So a little bit of an airiness, musk in the base as well. It's absolutely a classy, gentlemanly fragrance. It's made to be worn, to be used. And with this one, it's gonna depend on how you like the way violet is used in here. If you like that bit of sweetness that it has, then this could be like a signature scent. It's the type of fragrance that does have that huge versatility that I've been talking about. But if you don't like the sweetness, the way that the violet comes across here, mm, it's probably not gonna work for you. It is vaguely reminiscent of how Aqua Fahrenheit was done uh, by Christian Dior. Of course, that fragrance is now discontinued, unfortunately, but the violet is more along those lines than it is something like the original Fahrenheit where it came across very petrally. You don't get that here. All right, the last fragrance here, another classy one. This one, a uh, little throwback style to it, like a classic Italian style cologne, Bottega Veneta Luzione. This used to be a little bit easier to find at discounters, but lately it's become a bit harder. Though you can still find it at discounters typically, it is a fairly expensive designer fragrance from discounters. Uh, I've seen it run 
right around 70 to $80. So this has bitter orange. That's gonna be the citrus that you get most of here in the opening. It's got a lot of woodiness as it dries down, again, with kind of a classic Italian cologne style. Vetiver cedar and fir resin uh, being the woody notes in here. Really gentlemanly, great versatility, especially in spring and fall, and I think summer as well. Not a house that too many people are wearing. Bottega Veneta, not really popular, but they do have a lot of very solid fragrances. So there we go. 10 cents that your average person probably is not even going to know about. Truthfully, I'd be surprised if your average person even knew one of these, let alone two. Of course, people into fragrances, they're going to know all of them, but that's how it goes. I want to thank you all for hanging with me here today. Please stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.